Ten people in this room are not going to help us to save lives. But fortunately, the other 90% will. And you'll do that when you have the easy and accessible and trusted way to share your health data to support research. Because nine out of 10 will share. And because the human body is the world's richest database. You may think that it's a researcher off in the rainforest who discovers new medicines or new cures. You may think it's a chemist in a lab, but it's data. Data is the fuel for all medical research today. Researchers aspire to generate data, to aggregate it, to crunch it and analyze it, publish it, report it, share it, and then repeat. And whether we're looking to understand the natural history of disease or to understand which medicines work and which don't, or why some patients respond and others will not, it's all driven by data. I know this because I'm a researcher myself. I run clinical trials for a living. I generate data for a living, data to understand the efficacy and safety of new medicines. But like most of us in this room, I live at a crossroad. And for me, that intersection is with my life as a patient. And for that story, I'll turn back to 2006, the year that my daughter was born. And I was breathless. I was literally out of breath with a cough that I just could not get rid of. And I did what most of us would have done. I went to doctors and hospitals in search of some sort of diagnosis. And I had imaging studies, CAT scans, MRIs, X-rays, PET scans, biopsies. I had pulmonary function tests. Has anyone ever seen what a pulmonary function test looks like? Picture of the glass booth that a contestant in a game show is entering and it should be filled with dollar bills blowing around <laughs> except instead the only thing in the booth is the tube for you to blow into while a technician stands outside screaming blow 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 and at the end the only prize is data in this case data to understand if your lung function is improving or if it isn't. I generated a lot of data, both from the medical system as well as from myself, whether self-tracking to better understand my own levels of activity or other data or information that that may have correlated with. And I was meticulous in managing and tracking that data, which ultimately led me to understand a diagnosis of sarcoidosis, a rare inflammatory condition that primarily affects the lungs. And along that journey, I met a friend named Dave. And Dave was sharing with me his story, his story of battling cancer and how he also used data to his advantage in that battle. Over coffee together, Dave helped to diagnose me in another way, to diagnose me as an e-patient. And Dave later went on to a TED stage himself to talk about that journey and the rise of the e-patient. And thanks to Dave and that story, I realized that I was not alone, that there's a movement of e-patients, patients empowered by access and control to their health data. And that led me to appreciate three big trends around patients and their data. And as a researcher, one massive opportunity that those trends are helping to enable. The first trend is that we as patients today have unprecedented access to our health data. Thanks to enabling technologies and policies, we can access our data as never before. And while there are some awesome things that we can all start to do once we have that access, one of them is this theme that I am the best aggregator of health data about me that there is. 
I have health data at hospitals in Boston, a few actually, a couple in New York, a few systems here in New Jersey. If you go to any one of those health systems and punch me into the database, I exist, but they all know a thin slice about Craig. If you want to get the deep, diverse data, the EMRs, all the other data, the data that I'm self-tracking and self-managing myself, you have to come to me to get it. I'm the data hub of me. The second big trend is that when patients have access to their data, they're willing to share that data to support research. Nine out of 10, over 90%. And that number has stood up, whether it's been asked of highly engaged online e-patients or the more mainstream patients, patients at an elite academic medical center or patients in the community. Each time, over 90% are willing to share as long as it's on their terms. They want to have control and understanding about privacy and know that they're being protected. But as my friend Jamie Haywood also shared on an inspired TED stage, patients are willing to share their health data if it benefits themselves, their community, other patients like them. The third big trend is that, well, as I mentioned earlier, if Data is the fuel for researchers. Researchers are voracious for data. They can't get enough. And so here we are today. Patients with their unprecedented data access and their willingness to share researchers voracious for access to data, and yet a gap persists. A gap that's driven by a lack of enabling tools and policies to make that easy. Fortunately, some of the wheels are in motion. There's progress that's already happening that's underway. As a patient, I'm proud to have spent the last two years working with a team from a nonprofit and together with the NIH on a registry so that patients and providers and, and their loved ones can share health data. And we have an amazing and awesome community of patients that are actively engaged in sharing but it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of commitment from those patients. It's not easy to share data today. They have to sit and manually re-enter data into different web forms. <laughs> As a researcher, I'm also seeing how the research community is starting to appreciate the new role of patients driving research and the level of trust that needs to be built in order for that to be sustained. One project I've been excited to be a part of is enabling patients who participate in research studies the ability to download their own electronic clinical data from the study in which they participated. Because if you want to earn trust, if you want to come to the sharing party, you should first come sharing. Earlier this year, the Precision Medicine Initiative was announced by the White House, and it's now in phases of implementation with the NIH. And one of the cornerstones of that initiative is an ambitious one million patient cohort, a one million patient research database, including EMR data and biospecimens to be able to access genetic data, and even data that comes off of different mobile devices, different wearables. Reaching a million patients today isn't easy because our approaches just aren't scalable. We're not leveraging that data hub. Most recently, even consumer electronics companies like Apple and others are trying to make research participation easier and more accessible right in all of your pockets. But today's sharing is hard. It's hard for me to access my data it's hard for me to share that data because data doesn't flow easily from one physician or medical center into some research database. It's hard for me to manage my privacy and my preferences. What we're missing today is the very easy share button, the easy way for patients to click and share their data in a way that's consistent with their wishes, 
that has their trust. A button that's as easy as clicking to share on social media. We see some movement in that direction with a blue button that was launched by the federal government here in the United States, enabling some patients the ability to click and download their data. Well, what we're missing is the button right next to it to be able to share that data. Later tonight, you'll go home and probably around dinner time, the phone will ring. And it may be a person asking you to donate money to help find a cure. Some of you may have the resources to answer that call. Many will not. But everyone should have the resources, the tools, the access to be able to donate their data. Because data has value. And just as those nonprofit organizations had to earn your trust to be the stewards with your money, to be able to make the research investments that were right to find those cures, now they have to earn our trust to be the stewards of our data. When my lungs were failing me, I generated a lot of data, I owned that data, and I used that data to my advantage. Everyone in this room has the tools and the resources now available for you to do the same. And if or when illness strikes, nine out of 10 of you will join in being willing to share your data, to donate your data, to advance research. As long as you have the tools, the trusted tools to be able to do so. Donating your data shouldn't be hard. It should be easy as blowing a bubble. Thank you.